Hi, it's Mike Stevenson. Today we've got um, a video about Logic App, and we're going to uh, Logic Apps. We're going to build an API, and we're going to use Terraform to build it. And that API is going to point at Logic App standard, and we're going to show how to do the DevOps experience for configuring that API. We take a diagram here. So in the, in another video, we looked at um, the caller calls API management and API M has operations to call on the logic app consumption. And then we built um, a Terraform solution that could deploy an API where we had a reusable module to allow us to configure consumption logic apps very easily. So today we're gonna to look at these standard logic apps over here. So you may have a scenario where you've got a logic app and there might be multiple workflows, but there's only this one you want to expose to APIM and maybe this one and they're in two different logic apps so APIM can forward the calls accordingly you know maybe, maybe we've got a scenario where APIM's call in different operations for different types of logic apps but to the caller they just see an API so we're going to have a look at um, how to do the Terraform part of configuring logic app standard so if we go over to our um, to our code here so um, and this code's up in GitHub if you want to check it out. So here we're in this um, this Logic App um, standard file over here. And what we've got, so this is the bit where we're going to call the module. So we'll look at this first and then we'll look at what the module does. So I've got a collection here called Logic App Standard List. And in that collection, I've got one or more objects in this case i've just got one but i could just put a comma and create another object and build an array of these different logic apps i want to expose and to call my module i really need a few properties we're going to pass in so the resource group name for the logic app the which logic app is it in what's the name of the workflow and what's the name of the trigger that we're going to expose so there's a few differences between consumption and standard is, is what we're going to need to do to get these um, to get the right information from the logic app to expose it via APIM. So for your for each workflow you want to expose in this example, you need to supply those things. And then down here we're going to call my logic app standard module. Now in Terraform you could have different instances of this this of this module usage here. Um, or in this case, so you know, if I had four logic app workflows to expose, I could reference, I could use four instances of the module. But actually, what I'm going to do that I think is quite cool in Terraform is I'm going to use the count here, where this points at my array, and it's going to loop over my array of workflows and create multiple operations. Even though I'm only specifying this bit of code here, I could build. You know, I could build it for one workflow, I could do 100 workflows, but all I'm doing is just a loop over with this module call. Now here are the properties I'm going to pass in. These are the workflow properties. They're all coming from my array up here. Here's the details about the APIM. So we know it's resource group, it's name, and the API name that we're going to pass in. So in this file over here, you'll see where I actually built the API itself. So there's basically one resource in, in Azure RM Terraform module that you would use that way you'd build the API itself. And what this will do is it'll add operations to the API. So here I'm passing in the name of the API I wanna add. Now, these properties here, potentially they could come from the array if you wanted to make it so that you can have logic apps added to different APIs if you wanted and also I'm just passing in references to the two Terraform modules that I'm using within my module so this this here is going to just build all those um, operations for us now how this works then up in in the modules here I've got my standard um, my logic app standard Terraform module. So here you can see I've declared all these variables that we pass in. So we've got the logic app name, the resource group, etc. All the things that you saw in the previous file. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the what the module's doing. So here at the top, we're making a call to get a resource group, which will be the APIM's resource group. So we're just getting a pointer to that 
we're doing a call that will get a pointer to the logic app. So this is a logic app standard resource using its name and its resource group. So we'll need to use that later on in some of its properties. Here we're using the AZ API resource and we're going to get a pointer to the workflow. So here we pass in the, the um, path for calling to get the workflow. We pass the name and then this ID for the parent ID is actually referencing back to the pointer we have to the logic app um, itself. So that'll know, we'll call that logic app behind the scene. We'll reference the workflow. So that'll give us a, an object in Terraform for the workflow. Next, we need the workflow trigger. So again, we're using AZ API resource. The path this time is different. This will behind the scenes make a call to the management API to get the information about the trigger. So we need the name to be the, tr uh, the trigger name that gets passed into the module. And then the parent ID is a bit more complicated this time. So we need the ID for the logic app. And then for just off the edge of the screen, you'll see the workflow here, which will actually reference back to that Terraform object. Next up, we're looking at the, um, the trigger. So this bit here, if you notice, this is an AZ API resource action. So this is going to call behind the scenes the management API to get the callback URL. So this is going to use the ID for the trigger that we got in the previous Terraform object where we call to get the trigger details. So it's going to make a call to that object in the management API. And we're going to execute the action called list callback URL. And then this bit here will basically just expose the properties that come back from that call so we can use them in the next object. So next up, we'll create an Azure API management backend that points to this workflow. So for the name, we're going to pass in the name of the logic app, a little dash here, and then the name of the workflow. So that's just an easy way for us to see that. Um, we need to pass in some information about the APIM instance, so which APIM, where's the resource group. The URL is going to basically decode the call to get the trigger. So if you spot here, we're calling the workflow trigger callback, which is this object up here. That, that call originally would have had an output which has a base path in it. So that'll be a JSON object. We're going to decode and reference the base path, which will be the URL for the back end in API management. And then here we're going to configure the query parameters exactly the same as how we decode the workflow trigger callback. But this time we're going to just get the properties of it for the signature, the version, etc. And that'll configure the back end in APIM correctly configured to call that logic app. Next, we need to create the operation in APIM. So here, this is the object for the operation. We have the details of the API. We're going to create an ID. So we're going to just concatenate the logic app name. We're going to use a little hyphen there and then the workflow name. And I've just put post at the end. Um, the display name will kind of look the same, but a bit more friendly formatted. The URL template, I'm just going to put the, again, the name of the logic app and the name of the workflow is the path. And here I'm going to just specify a blank request and response. Um, you know, you, you could modify those requests and response. You might modify things like the path if you wanted. You could just pass them in as additional variables into your module. And then at the bottom, the last bit is the policy. So here we define the policy. So we've got this as your RM resource policy. We pass in the name of the API M instance, the name of the API, the operation ID we've referenced from the above object we've just created. So it knows which um, operation to apply the policy to. And then the key bit is in here. We're saying for the back end, just point to the back end we created earlier on by name. It's already got all the authentication set on it. We use the URI rewrite to just flatten the path back to the base. And that call would then pass straight through to our, um, uh, to our logic app. So if we have a look at this in action, if we go over to the... Um, 
APIM policy. So here you can see I've got my operation here. So it's got the name of my logic app and then the name of the workflow here. And it's basically ready to run. So I'm just going to give this a quick run and check it works. I don't need to pass any input to this one. So if we scroll a bit further down, we can see the call was an HTTP uh, 200 response code. We've got a little message with um, with a run ID and we've got all the normal headers here that come back from, from a logic app. So we, we're happy that works okay. Um, if we go to the designer, you can see here, we've just got the policy that specifies the back end. So we know we're all good on the policy. And then over here on the um, in the back ends, you can see this is the back end I've created for that um, API. Here you can see we've got all the properties for the, um, the signature and the query parameters. And if we go to the overview, you'll see we've we've got the URL for the logic app that it uh, it lives in. So hopefully that showed that it it was really easy with Terraform to build. Um, to build that API. So we had, um, you know, we get to the point where using this module, if we just go and look here, I've just got an array of which workflows do I want to expose. And I just do a loop here over that array and I can, you know, kind of just push my logic app into all the APIs that need it. And that makes my DevOps experience really easy. I don't have to do all this complex configuration over again. I can just reuse that module. Um, thank you for listening to today's video. I hope you found this useful. Please feel free to reach out with um, any questions or any requests for other videos. Have a great week.